several years since the last time I was here. But inshallah this will be an opportunity to meet regularly, inshallah. inshallah. I'm also grateful that we have this blessing of having this pre hose program in Birmingham. Uh, after <coughs> some months of preparation, alhamdulillah, it finally started. Your interest in these programs is very encouraging. So not only, inshallah, you will be receiving the reward for learning, which is great, but also you would be, inshallah, given the reward for promoting this whole concept of learning and studying. So inshallah you have double reward. And inshallah if you encourage also other people to study, then you will get the third reward, inshallah. May Allah multiply your rewards, inshallah, for every good thing you do. <laughs> what we are going to do is we are going inshallah to have a study of this new publication self-development uh, as a book is new but this is uh, something that for several years we have been working on it and first it has started as different talks or seminars on spirituality uh, first uh, for example was even something for christians you know, we had different rounds of Catholic Shia dialogue, so sometimes I was asked to give a presentation on Islamic spirituality, on a spiritual direction. Uh, sometimes I had course for our own community in Vancouver, in Toronto, in the UK. In Islamic Center, you know, we had a course on self-building. So, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave tawfiq with some help from the Friends, we managed to publish them as papers in the volumes of Catholic Shia Dialogue, in Message of Thaqalain. Then with extra work and checking references, adding more references, Alhamdulillah, it became ready as a book. So now what you have is the book. Uh, in this book, we have eight essays. They address different aspects of Islamic spirituality. And each of them by itself is also possible to be read independently. If Allah gives us tawfiq to finish this, then we would start with a representation, inshallah, of Islamic ethics. But this is a prerequisite for that. As you would see, inshallah, in the book, and you have the book also in front of you, and you can you know, follow me also by looking at the book. The first chapter is the significance of self-control and self 
purification. I think this might be a good start for any study of Islamic spirituality. <coughs> Self-control and self-purification. There are about 30 points in this chapter. So I mentioned this as points. You can make yourself also bullet points for yourself. And I hope also you would have uh, discussion and mubahasa because very important part of Hose study is to have mubahasa. Uh, just last week uh, I talked about the significance of discussion. The lecture is online, if you could, you know, about manners of studying and discussing. Mubahasa, discussion is very important. You know, in the Islamic narrations, hadith, we find lots of things about mubahasa. Mudhakaratul ilm. Knowledge is not something that someone sits at home or in the university or houses. Two or three, should not be more than this. Two or three friends with whom you discuss. This gives you ability to make sure that you understood properly, ability to be able to present and to also deepen your understanding. It also helps you with memorization. So this is very important. Okay, so one way is inshallah to have for you these bullet points. The first point which gives you an idea about the entire chapter is a common idea among all different types of spirituality, whether it be religious spirituality, Christianity, Judaism, Islamic, or even, you know, there are nowadays a spirituality without God. It is very difficult to imagine, you know, how can there be a spirituality without God? So, but in all types of spirituality, you find that they ask you to observe certain rules. There are certain things that you should do and certain things that you should not do. I don't know of any spirituality that says do whatever you want and then you can be a spiritual. Just carry on with what you do and then you will be a spiritual. This is not a spirituality. At least you have to reduce some of the worldly things some of the materialistic things. Otherwise, it's not a spirituality. So, some people think that a spirituality is something like a good you know, dress. You do whatever you want, but put a good dress on yourself to cover your ugly, for example, you know, parts <coughs> of the body. No. You have to be Make sure that there is no ugliness in your actions, in your intention, because spirituality is not an outfit. Spirituality comes from within. Therefore, we find that Quran tells us about controlling ourselves as a, a start point. We have to control ourselves. If you look at the book, you have three verses in the beginning of this first chapter. The first verse is the first verses are forty and forty-one of chapter seventy-nine. Did you find it? Wa Yes? A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى 
very beautiful. As for him who fears maqam rabbi, this maqam rabbi can mean fears the position of his Lord or a standing before his Lord. Because we are all going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, not physical, you know, uh, standing before Allah, but this is a kind of encounter without hijab. All people, good or bad, they would experience laqa'ullah in the Quranic sense, not in the Irfani sense. In the Quranic sense, laqa'ullah happens to everyone. يا أيها الإنسان إنك كاذح إلى ربك كذحا فملاقي. All people are going to meet Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And Allah متبارك وتعالى رحمة الله عليه says the reason this is called لقاء الله meeting Allah is because there would be no hijab, no barrier, no veil. So even divorced people. would find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very manifest. There would be no doubt. In dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not that manifest for some people. Some people say, you know, we cannot find him. Yeah? But on the day of judgment, if you ask every person about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would very clearly and obviously find him. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْحَقَّ There is no doubt about it. So, رَفْعُ الْحِجَابِ The removal of the veil happens to all people. But whether they are going to have good experience or bad experience is different. وُجُوهُنْ يَوْمَئِذَنْ نَاظِرَهُ إِلَى رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَهُ وَوُجُوهُنْ يَوْمَئِذَنْ عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَ تَرْحَبُهَا قَتَرَ So people have two different experiences. Inshallah, we will talk about this later. Anyway, we have this position that one day we should stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should have this mulaqi. Mulaqi means you would be doing laqa, mulaqat. Some people don't want to think about that. They think, It's worrying too much. It brings stress. It's better to forget it. It's better not to think about it. But this is not a good approach. You have to remember this actively and prepare yourself for this. Because without thinking of that day, you would not be able to understand how you should prepare yourself. Yes? If you don't know that you are going to have an exam, or you don't know what is the exam going to be about, you cannot prepare yourself. By the way, we will have an exam, inshallah, for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, prepare yourself for exam. But not an exam that you would fail if you study. No, inshallah, you study, you don't fail. So, Allah says, those who have fear of that standpoint, وَنَّهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَى And they prohibit their soul from her whims, from going after lower desires, حَوَى Not the appetite, you know, lower desires, whims. This is a very beautiful way. نَّهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَى Imagine, If you have a horse and you are riding a horse and this horse wants to go to a dangerous place, you stop the horse. Our nafs is like a horse that we have to tame it. If you let the horse go everywhere, then you will get into trouble. You may go to other people's farms, you may go, you know, to dangerous places. نَعَنْ نَفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَى 
fa innal jannata hiyan ma'wa the people who are careful and prohibit their soul from going to bad direction they would have inshallah their place and residence in heaven you just need to make sure you don't do bad things this ayah also gives us a very important point about the difference between islamic culture and liberalism of course as i said it's not only islam any kind of spirituality would be different from liberalism liberalism says do what you want enjoy yourself by doing whatever you wish the only thing is be careful not to get into trouble if you manage to hide what you do is okay but if people are going to find out be careful otherwise the main thing is pleasure maximum pleasure is the aim and the end for liberalism islam or any religion in principle has different approach to life unfortunately sometimes people who are influenced by liberalism they try to justify liberal approach to life by religion so they try to give you green light for whatever you like they say you know you can be muslim but you can do everything they find a way to legitimize everything that you wish to do they think that for everything there is a halal option you can do everything that other people do just be careful you can make it halal but this is not islamic we cannot do everything that other people do and then call it halal no we cannot have halal wine we cannot have halal adultery we cannot have many other things as halal there are things that in principle are right anyway our approach to life is this that there are things that are harmful and you have to avoid there are things that allah is not pleased with we have to avoid some people have difficulty with this they don't want to say something is haram they want to make everything halal as much as possible why certainly there are things which are useful there are things which are harmful if someone says everything is useful for you just to please you or make life easy for you maybe in the short term you would be happy but in the long term you are going to suffer <coughs> so the next verse is verse 26 of chapter 38 Allah talks to Dawood ala Nabiya Nawa Ali wa alayhi salam and says La tattabi' al-hawa Do not follow hawa, wings. Why? Fayyudhillaka an sabeel Allah Because then they will take you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because hawa has no basis on reason or reality hawa is just what is giving you some pleasure some immediate satisfaction this is hawa there is no substance there is no reality also in verse 135 of chapter 4 Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kunu qaddamina bil qist shuhada alillah 
ولو على انفسكم او الوالدين والاقربين This ayah is very important inshallah when we start akhlaq the very first virtue I'm going to talk about would be inshallah truthfulness sidq and this ayah talks about the significance of sidq you have not only to observe truth you have to be a witness for truth. Even if it means you should take a position, a stance against yourself, your parents, your kinship, truth is more important than anything else. First of all, you should rise you should stand for justice, for social justice, for equity. And this is very important because you know what is the aim of all the prophets and messengers. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيَّنَاتِ وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ Why? We have sent all the messengers and provided them with the book, with the scale. Why? So that people uprise for justice or stand for justice, establish justice. Okay? So Allah wants people to be but when it comes to Mu'minim, Allah says, I don't want you to just be Qa'imin Abil Qist. You have to be Qadwamin Abil Qist. You know, Qadwam is more than Qa'im. Qadwam is Sigay Mubalighi. Means someone who does something a lot. You know, the difference between Alim and Allah. It's a big difference, yeah? Raziq and Razzaq. It's Sikhatul Mubalighi. You know, it shows intensity. So Allah says, you mu'mineen should be qadwameen bil qist so that other people become qa'imina bil qist. You should be witness and offer testimony for truth so that other people be truthful. This is why Allah says, وَكَذَٰلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُحَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ What Allah expects from Muslim nation is not just to be moral, just to be virtuous. No. Allah expects from Muslim Ummah to be examples for virtues, not just to be virtuous. In the way that Rasulullah is shaheed, for you is a witness, you should be shaheed for other people. Rasulullah is shaheed, is a witness for you, and you have to be witnesses for other people. So this is what Muslim Ummah should achieve, to be examples of virtues for other people. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qadwameena bil qist. Shuhada'a lillah. For the sake of Allah, be witnesses for truth. Valaw ala anfusakum. Even if it is against yourself. Awil walidayna wal aqrabi. Or maybe against your parents, against your near ones. In yakun ghaniyan or faqiran, fallahu awla bihim. Whether they are rich or poor, Allah is going to take care of them. You don't need to do injustice. Say, you know, I have to take care of my son. I have to take care of my cousin. I have to take care of you know my father by doing haram. No, you don't need to do that. Allah is 
there and he can better take care of them. Then Allah says, فَلَا تَتَّبِعُ الْحَوَى Do not follow your wings and تَعْدِلُ So that then they, you would do injustice, you would go away from the path of justice. So, in both 